Okay guys, uh, Dave here, uh, G7IYK. Um, I thought I'd uh, just do a quick uh, overview video of the um, uh, uh, Q0100 ground station that I've uh, put together. Um, as uh, so, this is it in its uh, in its entirety. Well, with the exception of the um, of the antenna and dish. Uh, so um, yeah, we'll go um, we'll go over the the various parts. Probably is the is the is the best starting point. So um, using my trusty pencil. So the uh, the hub of the whole design really um, is the is the Pluto Plus, which is a um, um, 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz uh, software defined radio with um, two RX and two, uh, two TX ports and uh, also gigabit Ethernet which is uh, kind of over here on the side. Um, yeah, really nice, really nice software defined radio. I'm not much else to say about that really other than that it does the job perfectly. Um, and I have it interfacing to um, SDR console over the uh, Ethernet connection. I'll, I'll probably, or I'll go into the, the Ethernet connection in a bit more detail in either another video or, or within the uh, body of the Instructable. But needless to say, it connects to SDR console perfectly, uh, runs perfectly over the Ethernet, which is great. Um, which means I can, ha I can have this whole unit um, out by the dish, and all I've got to supply is power, uh, at 12 volts or 13 volts or whatever for my, my, my standard rig power supply, DC power, and the only other connection it needs uh, back to the shack is the Ethernet, which that's good because it means that the um, connection to the antenna, to the LNA and to the um, 2.4 gig uh, helical antenna are kept as short as possible, especially on the transmit side where you're, um, where you're outputting uh, you know, potentially 10 to 20 watts at 2.4 gig, you want to keep the coax as short as you can. So ideally, this whole unit needs to be out near the antenna rather than using a long run of coax, if that makes sense. So, uh, well, let's go from, well, receive path, I suppose. So the, um, this is the, um, this is the receive, this is the receive antenna input. So this connects, this um, F type here connects uh, on a, a short run of coax out to the uh, bullseye LNB um, at the, uh, on, mounted on the dish. So uh, this little unit here, this is a bias T. The, the, um, the bullseye LNB uh, requires uh, a, a 12 volt feed or 12 to 19 volt feed uh, DC to power it so it's active it's not just a passive antenna it's, it's active because it has um, the bullseye antenna has a, uh, a down converter which is down converting from the sort of 10.4 10.6 gig input down to about 740 odd meg so it requires power and what this what this bias T does is it takes power here 12 volt a 12 volt input on these two connections or ground and ground and live so this is 12 volt DC uh, and then what it, what it does is it basically it um, phantom powers the bullseye antenna over the coax so uh, so this this output here is is RF and DC as it, as it says here on the top panel RF plus DC and then the other side is RF only and it has an internal DC blocking capacitor so that the uh, the output is only only the RF but the output this way is only the RF and and the this is phantom powered at 12 volts for the bullseye LMB. So we, then we've got a, a short piece of um, of, of, uh, of, of, of connecting um, RF cable, uh, basically output of the bias T to the input of the uh, Pluto Plus. Nothing else. I have not added. I not found. I needed any other att attenuation or anything. It works works perfectly well with a direct connection from the bullseye. So that's that's receive into that's RX one of the two RXs that are possible on the Pluto Plus. So that's RX one. Um, on the TX side, only marginally more complicated, really. Um, the output. I measured the output here of the Pluto Plus at a. Uh, approximately 5 to 6 dBm full power. So that's that's the sort of output you're getting from a Pluto Plus. That's what I, I measured about 5 to 6 dBm. Um, now really um, w w we need a bit more than that um, in order to drive the, the power amplifier over here. We, I, I'm, I, I was aiming for about plus 15 dBm. 
um, to, to which plus fee well we'll go through this chain but I was aiming for plus for 15 dBm so what I what I do is I, I, I in using the SDR console software I, I dial back the output of the Pluto plus to about minus 5 dBm um, and then I'm using this analog devices pre-amplifier module. This is sort of specifically designed a really nice little module and it wasn't sort of too expensive, about 30 quid I think, but I'm pr you pr probably can get them cheaper. This is a, a, a plus 20 dB uh, pre-amplifier. It's a, let me get this right here, what's it called? It's an analog devices CN, so uh, Charlie November 0417. Charlie November 0417 uh, pre-amplifier module, 20 dB, uh, specifically designed for uh, 2.4 gig. So we've got minus 5 coming out of here, plus 20 dB. So at the input to the power amplifier here, we've got plus 15 dBm. Now plus 15 dBm uh, is uh, approximately 32 milliwatts uh, uh, power. So um, that, that's pro approximately 32 milliwatts. So um, this power amplifier is really nice, um, really pleased with this. This comes from uh, SG Labs, which are based in Bulgaria. Uh, it comes out of Sofia. Um, was about 130 euros delivered, something like that. So it's uh, specifically designed for 2.4 uh, gigahertz um, and with a maximum power output of 20 watts, which is more than enough for this satellite, I mean, probably excessively high. <coughs> Excuse me. So the spec says that for a, a 40 milliwatt input, you get 20 watts output. Now I kind of decided I wasn't going to push it, you know, all the way to its 20 watts. So hence my 15 milliwatt input. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go into the, me measuring the output power later, but basically I may, I, I've got 15 milliwatt input. So minus five plus 20, 15 milliwatt, somewhere between tw 10 and 20 watts output. Uh, it, and there's its power connection over here. It's a really nice little amplifier because you don't need to worry about things like PTT. Um, it has a PTT input over here. This connection here is, a, is the PTT input, but you don't need it uh, because the designers, SG Labs, have, um, have, have effectively built in a RF Vox, if you like. So with an input as little as one milliwatt at this end, the uh, amplifier um, sort of uh, um, input power detector or Vox, if you like, uh, detects that and keys itself up. Um, so, um, so me putting 15 milliwatts in, it, it key, the amplifier keys itself up by detecting that input power. And then there's a there's a little trimmer in. I, I can't remember. I think it's over here in the corner underneath this top plate. I haven't touched it, but there's a little trimmer in there that allows you to adjust the amount of uh, the back porch or the decay on that. So how long the amplifier stays on after the input. Um, it's removed so I don't know what it's set to but it seems to work fine so I've just left it alone so that's it basically power input and output that, and that's what and then there's another F type here this 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 then this then goes out and drives the uh, the 2.4 gigahertz helical antenna uh, directly right now so have a look at all the other um, bits and bobs on here so obviously we need some power um, to run this whole uh, shaboodle um, so uh, I've got two um, cheap power supplies I mean I think they were sort of like five or six pounds each or maybe even less and that what that was buying them in the UK um, so the first one here the larger one this this will do um, three amps um, at uh, sort of 28 volts this this uh, PA takes 28 volts to achieve um, maximum um, 20 watts so I'm running at 28 volts so my inputs obviously um, 12 or 13 volts so I need an up converter this, so this up, this take goes from 12, 13 volts up to, to, to 28 volts. It's a little trimmer here to, to set your output voltage, so I suggest you set that before you connect it to anything. It seems very stable, doesn't even get slightly worn. The PA uh, is spec'd at about 1.6 amps at full whack, so this little power supply is more than capable of supplying it. It doesn't even get worn. So that's that bit. Uh, and then this little module here, which is kind of cool. I mean, I was going to sort of start taking, you know, I, I need five volts, basically. You need five volts for the, the Pluto Plus it's on a standard USB input. And you also need five volts over here to, to, um, to run the, the little PA, uh, the little uh, preamplifier. It's got a USB connection on it, which is kind of cool. So I was originally thinking of taking USB cables and cutting the ends off and stripping the wires and then connecting to it. But then I found this little module on, on eBay, which is, um, 
which again is, is 12 volts in, in this case, and has two standard uh, USB sockets. So it's, it's kind of like designed for like a car or something, I don't know. But um, yeah, 12 volts, and then you can just plug in standard USB cables without having to cut and trim any cables. One of them's going off to the Pluto Plus, um, and it will do uh, it will do a couple of amps on one and, a, and an amp on the other, uh, and then the other one goes off to the um, to, to this little preamplifier, which is probably taking next to nothing. Um, and that's it, really. So uh, yeah, two power supplies: one for the five volt, one for the PA, uh, the PA, the Pluto Plus, the preamplifier, and bias T. That is the whole uh, setup for the ground station, uh, without you know not including the actual antenna and the dish. So uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed that and um, I will be back soon. Uh, cheers. Thanks for watching.